Hello, welcome to the weekly devotions of Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Dave Shub. We start today by reading from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, where Paul writes, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Well, we're in the season of Lent. It's a season in which we follow Jesus on his way to the cross. We focus on the suffering of Jesus for our salvation. But in the process, we can't help but also be drawn into a consideration of our own suffering. If, you have any, if you're anything like me, you would like to avoid suffering at almost any cost. But suffering is a part of existence, and we can't totally avoid it. Why? I don't know. But if we believe in the salvation that Jesus brings through his suffering on the cross, we have to consider the possibility that our suffering can also bring life. I used to hate this scripture passage we read from the day about suffering somehow building, uh, building endurance and character because it used to be when I was young, I would tell my mom my struggles, my pain, my burdens, all the things I was, I was upset about, too much homework, not enough social life, and she would say, it builds character. I got so tired of hearing it, I finally said, I don't need any more character. But the truth is, Paul is right. Our suffering does somehow bring life, especially when that suffering is tied to the same love that Jesus shows us in his dying on the cross. As she grew older, my mom suffered because she was always worried about us kids. It was strange. She would call me up on the phone and say, you know, I just wanted to check in. I've been worried about you. And I'd say, Mom, I'm an adult. I can take care of myself now. And she said, but I'll always be your mother, and I'll always worry about you. It's the reminder of how our love somehow makes us so connected that we worry about each other. We suffer with one another. We endure the pain for the sake of the love. One of the most powerful movies I've seen is a movie called Shadowlands. It's the story, it's the story of C.S. Lewis. Um, a great Christian thinker who married a young divorcee named Joy, who came into the, the relationship with a young son. Now, Joy had cancer. It was a difficult part of their life together, and yet Joy brought such love, such hope into Lewis's life. But we find that Lewis was at first reluctant to embrace this love because as a child his mother had died and since then he'd closed in on himself. He was afraid that love would hurt him again. But Joy opens his heart and they marry. They marry knowing Joy will soon probably die of cancer. At one point Joy goes into remission and they're happy and they're excited but she also realizes the truth that this moment may not last. She warns Lewis, yes, we are so happy now, but remember the happiness now is a part of the pain then. That's the deal. He hears it, but he really doesn't hear it. The cancer returns. She dies. At first, Lewis can't deal with his grief. It's overwhelming. But his brother reminds him that there's also a boy to think about. So Lewis finally sits down with his adopted son and talks with him, and they, in a moment of incredible openness and pain, share their grief together. They share their love together as well. And the movie ends with this line from Lewis as he reflects on all this. He said, why love if losing hurts so much? I have no answer anymore. Only the life I have lived. Twice in that life, I've been given the choice, as a boy and as a man. The boy chose safety. The man chose suffering. The pain now 
is a part of the happiness then. That's the deal. Somehow, in some way, we will probably never understand. Love and suffering are tied together. At our wedding, Chris and I reminded each other of this by having someone read from Khalil Gibran's book, The Prophet, his section on love, and it goes like this. When love beckons you to follow, follow him. Though his ways are hard and steep, and when his wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you, and when he speaks to you, believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden. For even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so he is for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth. Like sheaves of corn, he gathers you onto himself. He threshes you to make you naked. He shifts you to free you from your husk. He grinds you to whiteness. He kneads you until you are pliant. And then he assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feast. All these things shall love do unto you, that you may know the secrets of your heart, and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. But if your fear would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it is better for you that you covered your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter, and weep, but not all of your tears. Love gives not but itself and takes not but from itself. Love possesses not, nor would it be possessed, for love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather I am in the heart of God. And think not you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire but to fulfill itself. But if you love and must needs have desire, let these be your desires. To melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night. To know the pain of too much tenderness. To be wounded by your own understanding of love. And to bleed willingly and joyfully. To wake at dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving to rest at the noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy, to return home at eventide with gratitude, and then to sleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart and a song of praise upon your lips. This is the love that Christ offers us. We can never find this love on our own, but God offers it as gift. But this gift has a price no matter what the nature of our love, between spouses, between parent and child, between family and friend, love given to strangers in the name of Christ, and the love we share with God. It always carries our willingness to suffer for our beloved. God reveals the power of this love in Christ and yes, love in some strange way through this suffering makes us stronger. In our marriage, Chris and I have gone through difficult times, and yet we clung to each other in love. And beyond the suffering, we found that our love was even stronger, that it had grown. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Suffering is never good, no matter what. But God has the power and love to bring something out of the suffering. And those who love are not afraid to enter suffering for the sake of that love. We know that often the suffering is a part of the love. And in Jesus, we know that because of love, suffering never has the last word. Never. Let us pray. Lord, we hate suffering, and we know that you also hate what it does to your children. Yet you always stand with us in the midst of our suffering because you love us, and you bring new life out of it. 
Help us to love one another as you have loved us, even when that leads us into suffering. Amen. May God be with you in the midst of your pain and struggles, but know that love always surrounds you, no matter what comes. Have a good week.